game, well, new to me games, uh, two of which are fairly new. Uh, one has been out for a couple of years, but there are games I'm going to be using on the stream in the future. But I thought it would be good to just start with um, a an unboxing tonight, talk about the games, and if anybody... Um, if anybody had questions about it or wanted to ask me about what they they see, uh, I thought we could talk about it. Um, so yeah, we'll get started here. Let me pull up some things, and we'll get going with with it. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's. I already got the games. You can already see that one of the games is uh, Ruins of Mars, which it was a Kickstarter. Uh, finally got my copy. Um, yep. So it is published by a Atheris? Atheris Games. I've never, never had anything from this company. The other game is uh, Marvel X-Men um, Mutant Insurrection which uh, I'm going to probably be streaming this one with, with Blaze live. I uh, just recently showed him the um, the X-Men TV show from the 90s, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, the, the uh, X-Men TV show. And um, we'll, we'll be playing that. We'll probably start on an easier mode, see how it goes. And then the third game, th this is the one that's been out for a little while, but um, – I thought that I would share here because I'm going to uh, be streaming it anyway is uh, Reichholt, which is another Juve Rosenberg uh, game. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll just get these going. Let's, uh, let's see, what do I want to start with? I, I guess I want to start with Reichholt. Um, so Reichholt is a one to four player game, ages 12 and up. Plays in 30 to 60 minutes. I'm going to adjust this mic, uh, this camera over here so that uh, I can still unbox and talk about it. So, it, yeah, plays in 30 to 60 minutes, ages 12 and up. You're gardening. There is a story mode in there, as it says. Let's get this pl plastic off so the light isn't just bouncing off the plastic. But, um, okay, what do we. Yeah. I guess I need to sharpen my knife, probably. Yeah, that's okay. That's what happens when you carry a pocket, pocket knife. I, uh, Blaze and I were actually um, painting again today, so that was fun. Um, with painting, we um, did a skeleton mini that I'll have to show later on. But um, just a slight move. But um, yeah, I was cutting up some basing materials for him. And anyways, okay, so right, Colt. Uh, it says, in Iceland, you can climb volcanoes, marvel at the aurora borealis, count sheep, and eat delicious tomatoes. It's good, good to me. Uh, thanks to geothermal energy, Iceland is a vegetable paradise. Players take on the role of vegetable farmers to build a livelihood on the beautiful uh, in beautiful Iceland. But with all the tourism around the natural wonders, competition uh, it, to have the best vegetables is fierce. Oh no, fierce vegetables. Okay, so but it's got this pretty little box with a uh, box fart. Um, ooh, it's pretty inside too. Oh no, it's not actually on the box. It's just a little insert that they put in. Maybe I think. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it there. Um, yeah, it's just an insert, but that's okay. It's pretty. So there's the uh, tomatoes. Those are wooden components. And let's see. Yep, some tomatoes. And it looks like I'm going to be doing some stickering later on with this. Um, yep, so there's different stickers. There's blue, yellow, purple, and green there. Yep. We'll have to see if there's stick. Oh, probably on these. And oh, so there's there's pink discs, even though the color here looks purple. That's fine. And I guess those are black discs with the green looking people. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's fine if they go together. Who cares, right? Um, and then 
We have some lettuce, maybe. Let's see. Looks like lettuce to me. Yep, some lettuce. Um, there's baggie and another baggie. Okay, so they give you some baggies. What are these mushrooms? Mushrooms, cool. Mushroom components. And there, mushrooms. Nice. And what else am I gardening in this game? Carrots. Some fierce competition for sure with the with the carrots. Actually, I can never get carrots to grow right. So if anybody ever has a, there's carrots, has a suggestion on how to grow better carrots. My carrots are always dinky. They always taste really, really good. I mean, that was in Michigan too. So I don't know if that was the sandy soil, if they didn't like that, or if I didn't have enough of um, alkaline or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm not a good gardener, but we, we grow lots of tomatoes because um, I like salsa and sauces and things like that. I'm not sure what that is. That is cauliflower, maybe? I don't know. So an another component in there. All right. Um, some cards. Let's take a look at the cards. These are larger than standard cards. Um, let me see if I have a standard card sleeve here. Um, let me get a standard card sleeve out and I'll show you how much bigger these cards are. Hi, if you're just joining me, I'm just doing some unboxing. Feel free to ask questions or talk in the chat. Uh, so if you can see that, that's a standard card sleeve. Uh, these cards that are in here are bigger than a, a standard card. And I'm not sure off the top of my head what size that is. But yeah, let's take a look at what those cards look like and check out their quality because I'm always curious on the card quality in a game. So, do, 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 do. oh, those are nice. Surprisingly nice. Um, the cloth style cards. And uh, I'm not going to read all of them because there is a story that I'm going to be streaming with this um, in, the for, uh, in the single player mode later on um, but we, we'll just look at look at some of them real quick there's that round order oh, so, so these are just reminders blue yellow the pink and I guess the player color is a, a black so all those oh I should hold them up here um, and then those might be story cards, so I'm not I'm not gonna read all those right now or see what all of them do right now because I don't want to ruin ruin the story. Hope to have some fun with this game. Um, all right, what are these cards? But those were, those felt they had a nice hand feel to them. They didn't feel like cheap cards, so that's cool. Uh, da -da. Stop attention, please. Do not open. Only open once you are familiar with the game. Um, so it says that it says stop there too. So I'm, I'm not going to open these yet. We'll open those on a live stream or something. Once I know what else is going on um, with the game, we're just checking out the basics tonight and we have two other games to check out anyway. So, okay, come on, come on rules. What did I just drop? I dropped a piece. No losing the pieces. Okay. I'm going to put those there. Uh, let's see what's in the rule book. Uh, I really like the nice color printing they did here. Uh, more realistic look than a lot of UVA's games. The setup instructions are for two to four players. Changes for the solo game or story mode are detailed on pages 11, 12. Okay. So that's the general setup. And then glossary of key terms. I love seeing a glossary, so that's cool that there's a glossary in there. Um, different terms in there. End of game and winner, action spaces, general clarification, service cards, and then service card specific clarifications, and then the solo game. The solo game follows the rules for a two player game, but with the following changes. Okay, so there's some stuff there. And then. Um, do, do story mode 
I'm going to read the, no, no, I'll, no, I'll save that for when we actually play it, but there's a backstory and a different setup and work time. So I'll have to get into this so that I can share that. I'll be putting that on my calendar uh, for when I actually get to it of uh, what is going on. Well, it looks like some lettuce. So there's some lettuce there and um, let's do some punch outs. See how the quality of this cardboard is. I love Love me some cardboard and glue, <laughs> making sure it's not not junk or they, they had separation problems. Um, okay, so that. I mean, I make fun of it, but honestly, it ruins a gaming experience for me if, um, if things aren't right. So I'm not going to fold these now, but it looks like these are supposed, supposed to fold... Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll make one right now. Why not? Um, so that folds up, that folds up. A little mushroom box. And no problems with the gluing or separation on the cardboard. So that's good to see. Um, throw that in there. And thankfully these are not super flimsy feeling little cardboard boxes. I love it when games have a more um, like pick me up and check me out feel to their components. But if um, things don't go to well together well or easily uh, because the cardboard's too thin or there's a gluing problem or whatever, that, that just, it's a bummer. It's a huge bummer. Okay, so there's that. A uh, little box there for mushrooms. And there's more boxes. I'm not gonna put them all together right now, but that's cute. I like it. Uh, different Icelandic looking art, I guess. Um, and one thing that, yeah, so the specific game that I'm thinking of right now that like I really enjoy the gameplay, but I was uh, bummed out when I did it was uh, Everdell. When I put together the tree, there are fairly good instructions for the tree, but my cardboard and the copy I got, and maybe it was just the copy I got, but I also didn't remember seeing any silicate packets in there. Um, but when I put together my tree, there was part of the cardboard that when I stuck it together, making the tree, it bent a little bit and I had to like reinforce it and glue it so that it didn't um, just get worse later on. And that was a bummer to me because I was really looking forward to my ever tree in that game. Okay. That's for recycling. And uh, I said, I wasn't going to make all these, but I guess I'll make one more of the lettuce one since I got it all out. Uh, and that's just, it just takes away from your enjoyment of the game, at least initially. But I, I, I'm always going to be thinking of like when I broke my ever tree a little bit, when I play Everdell, um, probably a little bit silly. I, I might have put these in upside down because it looks like it looks like there's the, no no it has to go that way that's interesting oh it's so they can it's probably so they can stack there's like little uh divots in here i'll see if i can get them on camera in a second um but it's nice when the cardboard is the right thickness and there's no manufacturing problems small details that matter but like They matter because they, they're a distraction if they're not right. Okay, so there's these little divots in the bottom here and here. And I think that's because these garden bed or garden containers or whatever they're, they're going to call them in the game. Yep, they do. They stack nicely. It's cool. That's fun. That's cute. Nice little detail. All right. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to punch everything. What, what is this? We'll check each sheet, though. That's just this little thing with the greenhouse and the house and farmer's market looking thing. No, oh, read the story. Okay. I'll finish all that later. We'll show off some more of the artwork. Fresh fruits and vegetables and mushrooms. And then here is the main board. But I can only get half of it in this shot at time because of my setup tonight. Uh, there. So it looks kind of like you have like a, uh, a chalkboard, you know, for your farmer's market. That's cool. All right, that's Reichholt by 
uh, Uwe Rosenberg. And like I said, I'll be diving into it personally, and I'll put it up on my calendar uh, to be doing some streaming soon. And I wonder what is it? So there's two kinds of player markers in there. I wonder what that, is that supposed to be like a milk jug type thing? I don't know. Who knows? I do not. I'm probably making anybody who is uh, worried about how components go in um, really nervous or like having a bad night just looking at it. Um, oh, and it's got something about the illustrator on the side of the box too. Right there. That's nice. That's cool. Okay. Very nice. Um, all right. And next up, we have, should I do uh, Ruins of Mars or, yeah, let's let's do Ruins of Mars next. And then we'll do the X-Men Mutant Insurrection last. Okay. So, oh, that, that goes in the recycling too. Okay. So, Ruins of Mars. This was a Kickstarter. I got the little promo card down here. Uh Okay, so that is a mutant. Uh, what does it say? Mutant it starts with three radiation. Give one of your radiation tokens to the player with the least radiation. Um, this place sold too, and I'm hoping to stream this one at some point. Also, I just have it. I, I need to get back to reading more rules more regularly. I just Seems like I've gotten behind on that a little bit. So I'm going to have to devote time to that. Okay. So Ruins of Mars. It's a one to four player game. Ages 14 plus. Says it plays in 60 to 90 minutes. Here's the front of the box. Let's get rid of the plastic uh, so we can see that. Um, again, I haven't never checked anything out by this company. Etheris. Etheris Games with the... Uh, Viper Cobra logo here. So I'm curious on how they did. This wasn't that expensive of a game either, if I remember right. So uh, there it is. Um, and nice cover. Yeah, decent cover. Don't mind the art. It's kind of cool. Yeah, Ruins of Mars. Um, we will do, 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 do. look at the rules real quick. Some say the Martians saved us, but it was a strange sort of salvation. It began with an explosion. Blah, 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 blah. And so a Martian apocalypse long ago brought humanity to Mars. We now hover at the crater's edge, wondering at vast machinery below somehow seeming both ancient and brand new quiet in its demise yet urging us to learn its many secrets our next evolution awaits in the ruins of mars i'll read all that at some point maybe on maybe on the stream too we'll see i don't know um there's setup so far i'm I, i'm thinking that the rule book is is pretty good um, it's kind of a different layout, but not, doesn't seem too bad so far. I, I, I expected this game to have a cheaper feel to it, uh, but it's, uh, it's not looking too bad. I reallocate all action tiles under the game. So I know it has a sort of like a mandala selection thing going on and there's these characters and there is a solo variant which has an AI. Uh, okay. AI's resource and language choices, credits. I don't know anything about any of these people, I don't think. Um, it just looked like something I wanted to take a risk on. So, yep, there's that. Level one, two, and three. A lot of info in there. We'll see how clear it is once I actually get to it. Ah, now this this is interesting. This is a glossy punch board, if you can see that. And in the past, glossies have tended in 
to be a cheaper. Uh, yeah, I mean, this isn't bad, but I can already see a little bit of uh, separation there. I don't know if you can see that in the, let's see if I can get that in focus. So right there, I guess I'm just too close. Uh, but there is a little bit of separation um, that I can see with the naked eye. So I'm just going to have to be careful with that. I, I, I just personally have never been a big fan of uh, glossy, unless they're done really, really well. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of separation. I don't know if that's a moisture thing or the glue they used. It's hard to tell. Um, these don't look bad, though. It's just, it's this, it seems like the glossy might be because they chose a cheaper printing. I don't know. I mean, the colors are nice. The colors are fine and good. I'm not going to print, uh, poke everything out because those are pretty small components if you can tell that's smaller than my finger now so i'm not going to poke it all out right now because i don't want to lose anything um let's see how this one is this one's fine uh no problems on that one but okay so that one's there again i'm not gonna yep uh, In-game triggers, blah, blah, blah. Has all those spaces there. Um, they spelled tiebreaker. Is that right? Is that, shouldn't that be T-I-E-B-R-E-A-K-E-R? -E -E they spelled it like that with no second E. I, I'm hoping that's in, intentional. Um, <laughs> That, that's a little worrisome uh, to not have a spell. Um, again, it just, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I could be over worrying, but these don't look like the highest quality um, cardboard quality. Um, so glossy sheets here. Glossy in the back too. I wonder why they went with all glossy. I mean, it's an interesting choice to me. Um, feel a little thin but also the glossy might help them hold up on the those those sheets there so that's fine looks like plenty of baggies maybe there's a couple baggies i don't know if it's plenty there's a couple baggies in the box um characters let's take a look at the characters and then i can put my promo card in the box too Oh, sorry for that loud noise. Um, okay, so we have an engineer. Engineer says you can use one of your text hourglass abilities second time this turn. May use one of your text hourglass abilities second time. Okay, so that's what those are. The miner has those symbols. Okay. Doctor, lose radiation. Savant may t pay. <laughs> it's a really funny artwork on there. I don't know why the giant forehead is compared to the rest of the body. May pay to, uh, may pay to transfer a second tile if you've paid to transfer this turn. Uh, pay one resource of your choice to move your highest language track marker up once. Choose one when tied. Ignore markers which are in the topmost spot of their track. That's the professor. Stowaway starts with an extra hourglass token. Use the hourglass ability of another player's tech card. And the traitor who looks like, uh, what's the guy who's, who's in that Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Uh, who's his dad? I can't can't remember the the actor. Jeff Bridges, maybe? Kind of looks like Je Jeff Bridges. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. And, of course, our super mutant. We're going to put back in the box. Um, some cards. Let's check out the cards. Anything else in there? Nothing else there. I always have to remember, just in case, check down here. Nothing there. I don't think there's anything else in the box. I think that's pretty much all of it, except we haven't checked out these components. We'll look at those in a minute. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Cards. Ooh. Those are nicer than I expected them to be. Cool. I like uh, good surprises. Good surprises are a good thing. Uh, nice vinyl cloth, thick cards. Um, 
good printing, the colors attractive. Uh, so let's see here. So we got some solar panels, backup tanks, supply stash, training mode, fuel pump, uh, energy collector, gamma, zoom serum, solar panels. Okay, and then it goes back through. And then prime filter, some individual things, master module, psionic screwdriver, hyper implants, a prototype, oxygenator, translator. I mean, the, uh, the artwork's fine. It's not bad. It's not super standout, but they somebody took a little bit of time on it at least. Oh, that's kind of cool. Time jolt. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I, I've seen much worse. Uh, and so those are the AI cards down there. I'm going to put these in a bag so they don't wander all over the bottom of the box. That that <laughs> That is a pet peeve of mine when, when little cards get all over and then you can't find them. Um, or you have to take forever to rearrange them or something like that. Especially since soul cards are there. I'm going to put those back in a bag. All right. And then... Let's take a look at these wooden components. Cool. Uh, those are fun. And some cubes and some cylinders. Uh, a couple different colors. So I'm not going to get everything out, but there's some of that. So what, what's this? Probably a first player marker. Probably completely superfluous, but uh, I don't know. We'll get this out. It's fun. It's uh, the rover truck thing. Okay. All right. So let's get all that back in there. All right. That I'm. I'm not. I'm not completely disappointed. Like cardboard could have been a little better, but but like that's a. I don't know that. I could be wrong. It just it the there was a little bit of separation. We'll see. We'll see how it all turns out. Um, how am I gonna put this in the box? It's gonna be like that, and we're gonna have to put some of this down in there that I already punched out. Otherwise, it won't all fit again. This is ruins of Mars. Uh, look at that. I mean, there's. A, Tons of little spaces there. Okay, I don't think this is a terribly complex game. I think it's it's fairly fairly simple, but we'll see. Okay. Oh, and where did that did that come from? This or from Michael? I'm just gonna have to set aside and read some rules this week. Game designed by Don Riddle. Mm, don't know Don Riddle. Don't know, don't know. That's okay. All right. And the last one for tonight, uh, kind of dice checking um, game where you are mutants <laughs> taking on the world as you um, make sure you, you don't uh, get humanity. The, the threat level in this game, I don't, I don't remember a whole lot, but I know that the threat level is related to like what humanity thinks of you and if you're uh, solving problems well enough or not. Um, there are variable hardness levels to the game and different uh, heroes with different powers, which just means they have different dice, um, dice selection. Okay, so here it is. X-Men Mutant Insurrection. Um, it is published by Fantasy Flight, it's by Richard Lanius and Brandon Perdue. Okay, and uh, there's the back. It says it's for one to six players. Um, let's see here. And they do, this is one thing I do like about uh, Fantasy Flight games is they do tell you what sleeves to get and how many you need. Um, but Calling all mutants, Professor Xavier needs your help. Become the X-Men in battle to protect humanity. X-Men Mutant Insurrection invites you and up to five other mutants to 
Safeguard our world while playing as iconic characters like Gambit, Rogue, Storm, Cyclops, Wolverine, and more. Choose from eight different plots and launch the Blackbird on missions around the world as you fight your way to the final showdown. Whether infiltrating the elite society known as the Hellfire Club, investigating the mysterious happenings on the island of Krakoa, or taking on Magneto and the Brotherhood of Mutants, X-Men Mutant Insurrection brings some of the greatest stories and comics straight to your tabletop. So one to six players, um, one to two hours, cooperative there it is uh, of course wolverine being the uh the center of all the artwork there since uh, wolverine has kind of shown to be the most popular character over the years running all right rule book welcome to x-men game overview blackbird assembly we'll put that together see what it's like components I don't know, they, they look a little cheap to me, but it's not a super expensive game. I mean, minis would be more fun, but I mean, that's it. Playing the game, uh, threat phase, raising threat, draw threat, winning the game, losing the game. There's some nice artwork with, uh, I don't know, Wolverine. Wolverine's face is a little bit ugly. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and this does feature some of the newer uh, characters in it. Not as the heroes necessarily, but like you get them as cards. And there's story cards and additional rules and showdowns. There's Magneto. That, that's pretty cool artwork of Magneto. That's interesting. Uh, training, training. That's where some of the new mutants come up is in the, the training stuff. Uh, there's Sentinels, of course, and Rogue being awesome as usual because she can take anybody out. Okay, so a quick reference at the back. I know this one is a fairly light game, but uh, just you're trying to do some stories. Um, so this is interesting that they kept this in plastic for the board here. Let's put together the SR-71 modified Blackbird. That's the, the X-Men's um, Blackbird. Maybe. Maybe I can do that without making a mess of everything. Actually, okay, I usually hate Stand, I shouldn't say hate, but I do not prefer standees usually. I was kind of disappointed that this game had, had standees. But, but this might have been a really good choice on their part, given um, how, like, the color on these is really fun. It's nice. Um, it's a good detail print. Standees can be, yeah, standees can be off-putting at times to me. But they did a good job with these. These are these are pretty cool. Um, okay, all right. Let's put together our our blackbird. Can I do this without messing it up? That's a question. Well, this will also tell us about the quality. Like why? Why was it in shrink? Did they have? Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't see any separation there. Okay, cool. Wings or the foils or I don't know. Let's see. It showed me how to put it together in the rule book. I, I don't want to mess it up. I, I I do look these things up. I I know how to follow rules. Okay, so they just slide in there. Thought so, but just want to check. Okay, and no problems, no problems, no problems at all. Nothing got bent. See, I would have been disappointed and sad right away because, like, you you take this and you get okay. We'll take Colossus out of here. Kind of looks like uh, Captain Planet there, but that's Colossus. And whoever you pick, you're gonna end up. Um, you're going to end up placing, I don't know why, I don't know 
if there's some like reason that actually makes sense or if it's just supposed to be like you're playing with your little minifigures but they're, they're not minifigures they're just standees but like you put them on the on your blackbird thing there and that's how they are during the game so they're just standing on there I guess until you do some ooh, ooh, flying around Okay, so, um, yep, yeah, I'm not going to punch everybody out. Like, these are kind of, when, when people used to think of Fantasy Flight, like, crazy dice, tons of silly components, but you weren't sure what they were all for, almost to the point of ad nauseum. Um, I... I I don't even care if it's a perfect game. I just want a little bit of fun dice checking. Um, so there's yellow dice, blue dice, and red dice, which each represent uh, different types of powers in the game. And let's see here. Uh, let's look at some cards. Do you want to look at these first? So these are tarot size cards, and these I believe are standard size cards. Let's look at the standard size ones first. See what they are. Is there anything on the sides here? Nothing on the side there, except for more artwork that's been folded over. That's, that's not, I mean, not a big deal, and that's not expensive for them to do, but it's a nice little touch. Um, let's see if they fit in a standard sleeve. Uh, no, so they, they that, that's why they put the number on the back. So if you try to put these in a standard sleeve, they're not gonna fit. Um, they are good quality cards. Uh, that's three games tonight. No cards were junky. That's that's nice to see. Okay, let's take a look at some cards. Angel, you can roll a die showing an X result. Uh, armor. Cyanic Smash, that's cool. Beast. I'll, I'll probably play as Beast. He's got two blue. Colossus. Cyclops trying to make Cyclops look cool. Scott, is it Scott? Is that Cy Cyclops? Nobody ever wants to play as Cyclops. Not usually. I mean, occasionally, like on the old arcade game. Forge, Forge looks cool. Gambit, you may spend one of your X, whatever your DNA or two hit results to gain a training token of that type. Ice Man. Jubilee, nice, nice. They brought Jubilee back from uh, Magic. Nice. You can turn one of die showing a helmet result to an X result. Okay. Phoenix, Rogue, spend an X result as a five. Wow. You can spend an X result as a five hit result. Okay, that's cool. Shadow Cat, Storm, Wolverine. X-23, if you've seen the Wolverine movie. Um, friendship. Friendship, devotion, devotion. So these are how the team interacts with one another, I think, if I remember. Love, commodity, commodity, research, research, discipline, discipline, training, training, admiration, respect, trust, trust. Okay, and then it looks like some reminders of how to play the game. Uh, yep, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Enough for everybody to have those nice little reminders and attempting missions. I love seeing reminder cards like this in a game. Um, it just helps teach the game faster, and people can uh, get into a game and enjoy it without having to like feel bad for asking questions because it's there, and then you can help uh, ask more in depth questions or whatever. Like, games should be enjoyable, and I, I think helper cards help people to play the game, enjoy it, and move on. Uh, clever. Uh, so these are like, um, I don't know, what are, they, what are these? Things that are going to happen, maybe events. Yeah, there's several sentinels. There's a sentinel artwork. Uh, vicious schemes. So some of the same uh, language as um, some of the other uh, games within the Fantasy Flight um, purview. Stretch then at what cost? Rookie mistake, Sentinel, 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 Sentinel. So these are bad guys that you're going to have to deal with. Surprise attack. 
Harsh lesson, breaking point, setbacks. Okay, harder sentinels, maybe. Uh, and these are, I don't know these. Cannonball, boom, boom. Oh, I remember, boom, boom, okay. Richter, Magma, Cypher. These are like younger X-Men, I guess, that you have to have about. Sage, Karma, Pixie, yep, okay. Warlock. Cecilia Reyes, Dazzler, Mirage, Multiple Man, <laughs> has four cards. Okay, cool. Those are nice. I like the art overall. It's consistent. Um, ah, I will say this game does not have multiple bags, so I'm probably going to have to pull some of my extra bags that I keep around to sort this out better. The insert's kind of dumb, although they did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the insert's kind of dumb, given everything that's going to have to go in here. So I'll probably be pulling that one out and making a custom one. Okay. Xavier, Xavier's office, Cerebro, Danger Room, Young Moon, Mutant. Okay, so are these, let's see here. There's these cards that have um, different continents on them, and you'll place them out based on how many players yep here we go based on how many players there are and so here's some of those so different continents have different things that are going to happen in the game um so that okay so we had some we had th like three locations and then we have these cards uh that you set up depending on how many players you have that are going to be like events happening. You have to deal with them, and there's uh, you know bad guys, villains, and so forth. Um, and then, ooh, silver samurai, cool. Um, Juggernaut, cool. Mystique, of course. Sauron, Omega Red, Lady Deathstrike, um, and Magneto. And classic looking like artwork from the cartoon. Kirko Island, nice, that looks fun. Um, so things to do, things to solve. The Phoenix Returns, bum bum bum. Too bad it's a terrible movie. Nice artwork though. Um, except it's got, no, okay. Hellfire Takeover. Yeah, the colors are great. Um, I don't know how the gameplay is going to be, but I'm going to have fun with it either way. I'm going to try to have fun with it at least. Um, and then these are conclusions that are happening over here. And the big card. Oh, yeah, because there's two cards that go like, okay, so like here, Angel has this card and this card, and they go together uh, next to each other uh, for your setup after you pick your hero. So Angel Armor, again, all the same heroes. And these are just the big cards that go with their little cards for your setup. And then these look like some villains. Let's see what we got. Brotherhood of Mutants, Second Genesis, Rise of Sentinels, Hellfire Gambit, Rubicon, Dangerous, and Hellfire Club. And Dark Phoenix. Okay, so those are probably like scenarios. And they show you how hard. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are. So these are easier ones probably. And these are harder ones. Cool. And Colossus will fly back into the box. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, this is, this is a dumb insert. It's coming out. <laughs> it's coming out at some point because it, uh, what? Like, I'm going to have to fit here. I'll fit everything in here nicer and uh, get some baggies to organize it all. Okay. So, but I do like the standees a lot better than I thought I would. Uh, X Men Mutant Insurrection by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, that will definitely be on stream soon, too. We'll be playing some of that. Uh, probably Blaze and I. And. <laughs> Thanks for watching if you watch live. If you watch it later, uh, still feel free to uh, send me an email at boardgamegames at gmail.com or 
hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or here on Twitch. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Happy gaming. We'll catch you later.